I'll now teach you how substituents on one side of a benzene ring can affect the acidity of a hydrogen on the other side of the ring. First, I need to remind you of something we covered back in chapter one. Remember, the lower the pKa, the more acidic the proton. Now let's look at these two examples. As you can see, the compound on the left has a lower pKa than the compound on the right. This means that the OH on the left is more acidic than the OH on the right. Why do you think that is? Well, the only difference between the two compounds is the substituents. So the substituents must be doing something. What are they doing? Let's first take a look at the compound on the left. As you'll note from our earlier discussion, the aldehyde group shown here is an electron withdrawer. You should remember that electron withdrawers suck electron density out of the ring. I can illustrate this by using the resonance structure shown here. If I have my electrons flip out of the ring and up onto this oxygen, you'll see that I get a positive charge at the ortho position to this substituent. If these pi electrons flip in there and close that door, I get a positive charge at this position. You'll notice that with a positive charge here, I can take these lone pairs and flip them down to give me this resonance structure, where there's a partial positive charge on the oxygen. So let me ask you, what do you think having a positive charge on this oxygen does to the oxygen-hydrogen bond? Well, of course, it weakens it, which makes this hydrogen much easier to be picked off by a base. In other words, having a positive charge on this oxygen makes this hydrogen much more acidic. So what's the bottom line? Well, having an electron withdrawer on one side of the ring will weaken the OH bond on the other side of the ring, making the H more acidic. What about our compound on the right? Well, you should recognize from our uh, earlier discussion that an OCH3 group, or a methoxy group as it's called, is an electron donor and therefore pushes electrons into the ring. If I draw resonance structures to show this, you'll see that I can have the electrons flip down here and these electrons pump up onto the ortho position giving me this resonance. This is supposed to be a plus charge here. <coughs> this minus charge can then close down here to form a double bond, and this minus charge can go on to that central carbon, giving me this resonance structure. Now, of course, I've continued to draw these resonance structures all the way down below until we get back to where we started. But the most interesting and important resonance structure is this one right here you'll note that there's a minus charge on this carbon which is bonded to this oxygen. How do you think that is going to affect the bond between this oxygen and this hydrogen? Remember that if a base comes here and tears this hydrogen off, it thrusts the electrons being shared by this oxygen and hydrogen onto the oxygen. In other words, if you deprotonate this hydrogen, you get a minus charge on the oxygen. Now imagine a minus charge being on that oxygen and having it being immediately adjacent to a minus charge on this carbon. Does that seem like a good thing to you guys? It doesn't to me. And in fact, this electron repulsion between a minus on the oxygen and the minus here on this carbon that's being formed by the electron donation of this substituent indeed contributes to this hydrogen being less easy to be picked off by a base and hence less acidic. So what's the bottom line? The more electron donating the substituent, the less acidic the hydrogen will be on the other side of the ring. The more electron withdrawing the substituent, the more acidic the hydrogen will be on the other side of the ring. We can see this trend being exhibited or exemplified by these various examples that I've taken from your book. Note that everywhere we have an acidic group, like these carboxylic acids here, if we have donating substituents on the opposite side of the ring, it actually increases the pKa, making these uh, 
hydrogen atoms less acidic. As we get to groups that are begin to be more and more withdrawing, you'll see that the pKa's decrease, meaning that these hydrogens are more acidic. Why? Because we now have partial positive charges being developed here, which weaken the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. Whereas in these donating groups, we've got partial negative charges being uh, pushed here, which decreases the ability of the hydrogen to be deprotonated, because that would put a negative charge on the oxygen here. Similar trends can be observed here with the uh, acidic hydrogens on this ammonium ion. Here are some problems for which I won't give you the answer during this presentation. Instead, I'll have you guys work on them together in class. As I foreshadowed numerous times thus far, the ultimate purpose for learning all of this stuff is to be able to apply it to total synthesis. Will we do that? Absolutely. But that will wait until we are together in class. This concludes Chapter 16. I hope you've enjoyed it. Your author has created a list of reactions we've discussed at the end of the chapter in the book. Thanks, and I'll see you soon in class.